All right, we've got Christina Mand Lakiani back on the show today. So, Christina, um, she's been on the show before. She's amazing. I'm really excited. We're going to talk about her new book. Um, but before I do, just if you haven't heard her before, you don't know who she is, she's an entrepreneur, speaker, philanthropist mother. She has been in the personal transformation industry for almost 20 years now. Um, she grew up working for the government of Estonia. She was born and raised there and, and you know, went forward to work through for United Nations, Oxfam. And then in 2003, she helped co-found Mind Valley. And so if you don't know Mind Valley, like I'd be kind of surprised, but um, she also helped in 2009 launch Mind Valley Russian, taking Mind Valley's best authors and teaching to the Russian speaking market, which is really cool. So Today, we are going to talk about her new book, Becoming Flossom. So um, check that out at christinaman.com slash book. Um, and we're really talking about this concept of like, she's getting into self-love, I guess you could say, in a really different way. Like she's looking at things in terms of like, instead of like self-love is changing myself, it's, it's much more along the lines of honoring and accepting the parts of us that maybe we haven't even uh, been willing to look at. And then using, turning them into our strengths. I love her perspective on this, especially make sure you listen all the way through. Cause I really love what she gets into at the end of the episode. So, um, yeah, just always an amazing conversation with Christina. Here is Christina Mand Lakiani. All right. So Christina, it is awesome to have you back on the show. Um, we're today, we're talking about your newest book, the art of being flossom. <laughs> I love it. So tell us about where the idea, you know, why you saw the need for this book and then we'll kind of dive into all the little parts of being flossom. <laughs> That's actually, you know, such a cool question to start because I, um, just for the background, I've been in personal growth industry for 20 years. Um, and as a co-founder of Mind Value, and we are one of the biggest, um, uh, producers of uh, personal growth content of course I've worked with a lot of authors and a lot of my friends uh, told me that I have to write a book but being obstinate as I am um, I just didn't feel it for for many years I didn't feel it I knew I had to write a book you know how it is you yep. go, like, yep. you, you're a little child and you know you will have one day you will have to go to university or something along those yep. lines and one yep. day you will have to work so it was this kind of thing where I was always aware of this, you must, and it just mm. didn't happen. And I've done even workshops and I knew what I could write about. And uh, I guess it's a COVID baby because at some point it just hit me. Maybe I had nothing better to do. I did not know. Maybe my social life, <laughs> who knows? But the point is that it came, it just came. It was uh, this thing which I couldn't. I, I couldn't not allow to come out. Uh, so mm. what's the inspiration? Yeah, well, I guess COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it opened up space, right? It's yeah. so important. And, and, and I think that happened to a lot of people in a lot of different ways. There was space for something that's been coming at you, coming at you, coming at you, you know, and tell us what you mean by flossom. And, and, and why was this? I mean, you could have written about so many things. You've been in personal development. I bet there are so many different areas of passion for you, but why was this the message? You know, it's so strange because it's not very often that I give a definition to the word flossom, although I'm sure it, it is somewhere out there in the internet. Uh, I somehow believe that it is something which each of us has to decide for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a personal thing. Uh, how I came with this topic precisely, I wanted to uh, write a book about finding your path back to you. And I guess mm -hmm. the the turning moment was, I wonder if, if you will relate or if anybody will relate. I remember once walking into the office and it was, um, I had already hit 40 and I had done all the, all the right things, uh, being a, an ambitious, uh, overachieving perfectionist, <laughs> like most of us in business are. Uh, I had done all the right things. I have uh, ticked all the right boxes. And then uh, sometime uh, then, on the peak, I walk into the office and my friend says, Christina, I missed you. And without stopping, I replied to her, I missed me too. And when I said that phrase, it just, it was such a cold shower to me. I was like, what wow. did I just say? And I realized that um, somewhere along the line, uh, along the way, I had lost myself. Mm. I kind of was there and my body was there, <laughs> but mm. I wasn't there either. Um, and, and that, that was, um, that was the, 
first day of me trying to figure out where where did I get lost mm. so that that was the path which I wanted to put in the book but not to put in the book in the sense of oh here's my story but more uh, in a structured way I have a very bizarre brain which works clinically <laughs> and mm. so uh, it's it's a tutorial to finding your path back to you back to you flossom and what flossom means is essentially uh, being flawed and being awesome about it <laughs> but mm. every everybody who who goes through the journey i guess they have their own definition of flossom mm, yeah i love this what you're opening up here because a friend of mine just sent me a video the other day talking about some new research that showed that um that there were very high depression like higher depression rates amongst like the wealthy and the mm. successful right and we look at a lot of the perfectionism that exists and i know for me sometimes it's um I may not always be the top winner in business and I'm okay with that in terms of financial stuff because I'm not willing to do certain things, you know? Um, and I think it's because of a lot of the healing opportunities I've had. So my measurement of success is not just having, mm -hmm. you know, I, I definitely am not adverse to money and wealth to be able to mm -hmm. build more of the mission, but I won't, I won't lose myself in the way in that path because of just the beautiful gifts of heart healing that I've been able to have, but I do. So in coming from the space that I'm in, I see this a lot. I see a lot, especially in personal growth and business coaching, this energy of proving, 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 see, I'm successful. See, I have a private jet. See, I made it. I did it. Look, 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 you know, and, and I have compassion on it you know, um, because I know a lot, of, a lot of my life was like achieving. I didn't real, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I just thought I liked achieving, you know, but mm -hmm. as I've been able to look back at that, I'm like, Oh, I see. Like it's, it, there's a proving energy behind like, look, see, I am valuable. I am worthy. I am good enough. And, and in it, um, makes it, I, I see perfectionism as somewhat of a wounded, uh, reaction mm -hmm. in a lot of us and being able to come back into that space of, wait a minute, you can have all these things quote unquote wrong with you. And that's like, okay, it's okay to just be a freaking human. And like, <laughs> people will still love you anyway, you know, is it takes courage. It takes mm. courage. I think when, um, wounds have been hidden by perfectionism, can you talk mm. about, you know, you said, I miss me too, you know, so where <laughs> did your path take you from there? And like being able to have those heart moments of like, Hey, it's okay to be an imperfect perfectly well, imperfect it's, human. It wasn't <laughs> such a straightforward path. And I generally don't talk about my path uh, per, per se, because I, we, we all have our own paths. I just recently had an interview and my guest um, showed a very interesting idea. She said, we often try to follow other people's path, looking at them, thinking that, oh, if they could do it, I could do it too. But the, uh, the point is that we are, our start, starting positions are different. Yeah. And if your starting position is different, you cannot follow another person's path because it's it, it, your trajectory of life is essentially like navigation with with a navigation device. I mean, like driving with a navigation device. How you can follow how can you follow a map from point A to point B wanting to come to point B if your point A isn't the same as in the navigation? Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are not even aware or content with the point A. For any kind of movement, you have to be absolutely certain to where you're starting from. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I never attempted to share my personal story, but I have learned a lot along the way. Uh, uh, and perfectionism is an interesting animal. Mm -hmm. uh, it can hide wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and a lot of that does come together with a desire to prove to the world that you are worthy. Uh, but proving to the world that you're worthy is something that we learn a little later. What's natural to human beings, and this is our biological need, is to want to be liked and accepted. Yeah. And I'm not going to say anything outrageous here, but it is something which we have inherited since the uh, since ancient times when yeah. we lived in tribes and we depended on each other. So totally. the desire to be liked is very deeply rooted in us. Yeah. And it's fine. Uh, but perfectionism, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's an interesting beast because mm -hmm. it's a little further than that. It's a little yeah. far further than the desire to be liked. So what happens, uh, what happens when we start being conscious 
and I'm saying being conscious, and by me, that I mean from a fairly young age, when uh, parents start judging us, not just for pooping in the wrong time or waking up in the middle of the night, but for mm-hmm. uh, for doing certain things, for being naughty, for example, when uh, teachers come into play, mm-hmm. when more peers come into play, what we learn is that if you are a good girl or a good boy, you deserve love. Right. And if you don't listen, if you do something, you, if you don't correspond to the idea of perfection of the most important peer in your life, mm-hmm. then that love is going to be withdrawn. Yep. So what happens is that we learn to negotiate for our love. We have yep. to deserve love. That's what we learn. And that's yep. not true, by the way, but we learn that we have to deserve love. Yep. And in, I could say that, yes, that I, that desire to prove yourself or to have million followers on Instagram or to have a viral video is uh, an expression of that desire to deserve love by doing something right. But that would be only half the problem. Mm. Because the biggest problem is that we give our own love to ourselves on the same principle. Only yeah. if we deserve it. Right. Yep. Yep. Conditional love is definitely something that I have seen is like one of the biggest things to untangle in any sort of like journey, uh, self-discovery journey, even in health journeys, right? Like it's tough for people to get to a place because I, well, I don't know if you found the same thing, but I have found that it's unconditional love gets confused with permissiveness and passive. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, Oh, I love you. If I tell myself, I love my body when I'm a hundred pounds overweight, what, it seems to me that the common consensus is that means I'm going to say, and that's okay. I don't need to do anything about it. And I'm like, Whoa, like who, where did you learn love from? Like love is mm-hmm. I want what's best for you. And I'm here with you and I support you. I can fully accept you and love you. And I'm with you. And I also want what's best for you. Right. So to me, that's where stuff gets really muddled is we don't, I don't feel like we know what love is as a society. We get very confused on that. You know, there are a few things I want to say. Uh, First thing about, uh, and health industry is such an interesting uh, industry to talk about self-love because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of what I call distortion of uh, the idea of self-love. Yes. Uh, In health (laughs) industry, by the way, but bear with me, and I hope you guys don't, don't, don't get upset with me. So first of all, about uh, that idea that if you love yourself, you have to take care of your uh, temple. So mm-hmm. feed yourself mm-hmm. well, take care of yourself, mm-hmm. uh, exercise, sleep, whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's true. But the causality goes only one way. If you love yourself, you're very likely going to take care of your temple. Mm-hmm. But just because you take care of, that, of your temple is not any yep. kind of proof yep. or guarantee that you love yourself. In fact, yeah. my experience shows that a lot of people get so obsessed with the thing which is tangible and understandable, like, and, and fitness is such an understandable, uh, I mean, it's tangible area because you can look at how the body looks at whatever blood tests and everything and say, oh, this is the hard proof that I'm doing the right <laughs> job. And because of that, people very often confuse self-care with self-love, which are yeah. completely different animals. And totally. here I'd like to bring an example of this little device, which I have. I don't charge it out of love for it. I charge <laughs> it because if I don't, it will not function. Right. Right. So self-care is about survival. Self-love is about thriving. These are very different things. And the problem with uh, with uh, confusing self-care with self-love is that it is so easy and so tempting to keep yourself busy that you sometimes close your eyes on the mm-hmm. essence of the uh, relationship. Self-love mm-hmm. is, not, is not purely just how you take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. It's about if you forget to take care of yourself, can you still love yourself? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you like make a mistake. Can yeah. you forgive yourself? That's the point. Right. Like anyone that we love in our lives, I find it so if we parallel how we treat other people, it starts to make sense. It's like you don't love your child because they are perfect. You don't love your child. They they may have all sorts of temper issues. And, you know, maybe you got one of those toddlers that bites other kids. It doesn't change how much you love them. <laughs> it's, it, you know, so the actions, it, love is, it, true love is unconditional. It, it has nothing to do with any sort of proving or merit or worth or anything like that. And I do think that you're, I mean, I think you're hitting the nail on the head is that we have been so indoctrinated from childhood that our love 
is dependent on not having flaws, right? Apparently, yeah. right? Like, it, it, and I've observed it in myself as a mom. I'm like, wow, what am I doing right now? I'm like shaming them for like not putting their shoes away. <laughs> like they're like eight years old. Like, yeah, they're going to forget <laughs> to put their shoes away sometime. And it's like, what did I tell you? Yeah, I'm like, what am I doing? Stop doing that. <laughs> you know? And so like, I've seen how much that's been patterned. in. I'd say to almost all of us as parents, that's just how you parent is that's not okay. And this isn't, you know, but it's in, it's in this, um, it is in a withholding love type way that most of us were raised in. So it's no wonder that we do that to ourselves. Right. And so when you talk about, you know, being flossom, (laughs) how do you start to build this relationship of like having love for yourself with flaws or seeing, (laughs) accepting your flaws, embracing, loving your flaws, (laughs) Uh, well, I, I really love that you brought the analogy of children because that's exactly uh, what um, was a wake-up call for me as well. Uh, we often say, yeah, of course I love my body, but I have to lose this, mm-hmm. whatever it is, whether mm-hmm. it's weight or wrinkles or gray hair or whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, or losing, not losing hair. Um, and you would never, hopefully, you would never say that about your child, that, oh, I, I I love my child, but (laughs) I would love my child more. So I'm really glad you brought this example because for me, it was a, when I realized that I started laughing because it just sounded so ridiculous to me. Right. Um, But when it comes to accepting yourself, it is a process, of course. And I believe there are three very crucial characteristics which you need um, if you want to learn to uh, know yourself, accept yourself and love yourself. Mm. Uh, It's not, it's not, a very uh, straightforward thing. It's not just about, oh, I love myself. You really have to uh, know who you're loving. Mm. No, I mean, you can't, you can't just love an idea, right? You can't love some kind of um, ambiguous uh, concept of self. You have to understand who the self is. And that's the interesting thing because most of us, like myself, are lost Um, and what we love very often is the idea of that perfect vision of me, of that perfect Mm -hmm. picture of me. If, Mm -hmm. uh, in relationships, when you fall in love, you also fall in love with an ideal until the chemicals in your body subside after the initial in loveness and you start seeing the real person. And then the question is, are you going to keep loving the real person? Or are you going to be disillusioned and unlove that person? So in self-love, very often the problem is that we do not love the real self. We love the idea of perfect self and Mm. we strive for it. You know, even the society is teaching us, fake it till you make it. Act as if you are there already, which is kind of good, but it's also slippery slope. Mm. Uh, And in certain circumstances, these are good advices, but it's also a very slippery slope when it comes to self-love. So Mm. self-love starts with you figuring out who you are. And as simple as it might sound initially, once you start digging deeper, you start realizing that it's not so simple. Mm -hmm. Our brain is built to to cheat us. Mm -hmm. That's its function. Mm -hmm. Its function is to keep you safe. And to keep you safe means to create reality which is palatable. Imagine, uh, I do not know how was your reaction when COVID hit. We mentioned that in the beginning. But for a lot of us, it was a denial. Oh, that's not happening. It's not going to last this long. Mm -hmm. Then there was a lot of distortion. These are the ways the brain is cheating you and telling you, no, what's Mm -hmm. happening is not really happening. And we do Mm -hmm. that. Okay, that aside, uh, usually when something really tragical happens to people, denial is the first reaction. If you lose Mm -hmm. a loved one, you can't believe in that for a while. Because your brain's function is to keep you safe. And such shock is not safe. But it's not just about shock. If you think that the perfect version of you is supposed to feel, think, and behave in a certain way, and you don't, your brain is going to be hard at work to make you feel bit better about that. Yeah, right. And there, yeah. and there, uh, welcome the whole chapter of psychology called uh, defense mechanisms. It's amazing right. how right. our brain tricks us, and we are not even aware of that. We think about ourselves, not what we really are. Yeah. And we are willing to love that version, but not the real version. And because the real version is so hard to love, it's better not to even notice that it exists. Mm. And how mm. do you deal with that? So how can you truly love yourself if you don't know yourself? Right. So it's it's a process which has a few steps. I've never explained it from this angle, but let me try. First, you have to get to know yourself. You have to learn to accept yourself the way you are. Accept. After that comes the love. And after mm. that, 
And that might be a stretch for a lot of people. You might actually, if you understand who you really are, you might find the strength, your unique strength in the very things that made you cringe, shrink, and feel ashamed. Mm. Mm, strength. Yes. You know, I, you're making me think a process that I do with my clients is I have them describe what they were like as little kids, right? I'm like, try to give me a picture of this kid. I don't care what it is. Are they highly emotional? Are they smart? Are they curious? Are they inquisitive? Are they shy? Are they like really loud, always center of attention? Like, what are they like? You know? And I'm like, just help me get a picture of this kid. And then we go through and it's which one, which of these qualities was you knew as a kid was valuable, right? Like it was reflected back to you by parents or adults or somebody is like, that's good that you're smart. That's good that you're hardworking, you know? And it's crazy. Like some of them are like that weren't valued or happy. I'm like, that wasn't valued, you know? And so we go through a process of, of inner child work where we value, it's like, doing active daily practice journaling about how telling the inner child how wonderful it is that they're happy, how wonderful it is that they're shy, how wonderful it is that they're highly emotional and how much you love and adore that about them. And it reminds me of what you're saying here, because those, those qualities get pushed by the wayside because we don't deem them as valuable if that wasn't reflected to us as kids. Right. So like one of mine was, I was, I was super emotional. I was super emotional. I was always throwing fits. I was all, you know, and, and I've learned to love that about myself. I'm like, Tara, like, that's good for you, dude. That's part of who you are. That's just, Mm -hmm. I, I love you. And that's part of who you are. And I see you and I adore, not only love, but adore. I love the word adore. Like I adore that about you, you know, cause that's how it is with the people we love. It's like, mm-hmm. maybe they get fly off the handle when one, you know, they have these little quirks and we, if you love somebody, you love those little quirks about them. It's like, that's them. That's them, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, I love how you're talking about getting to just getting to know yourself, right? Because mm-hmm. if we don't, didn't deem that part of us as valuable, then it just gets exactly like you're saying, like, it just gets denied. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh, that, that part doesn't exist <laughs> to mm-hmm. us, you know? So you're exactly right. Like there's a huge getting to know yourself process that has to happen. I'm curious what your definition of like flaws, you know, like it have, <laughs> do, do you go into this in the book? Like, what does this yeah. mean? No, I don't. I don't talk about flaws per se. I'm okay. uh, my favorite topic is actually honesty and um, mm. and uh, and lying. Somehow, it's just such a curious mm. and interesting and misunderstood mm. topic. Uh, but uh, when it comes to flaws, I, I call them dragons. I don't call them flaws per se. Mm. Uh, I call them uh, initially dents and scratches and wounds that you get along the way, yeah. but then they turn into dragons. And why I call them dragons is because usually in our beautiful uh, castles with uh, polished facades. They they're hiding in the darkest corners of the dungeons and we never want to take a <laughs> flashlight and go and look at them. Right. And you cannot, uh, you can kind of accept that, yeah, I have a dungeon full of uh, dragons and maybe mice, uh, but to turn them into your strengths and to learn to ride your dragons, you actually have to face them. Mm-hmm. You cannot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and what I'm talking about when I'm talking about flaws is actually not just liking or loving yourself despite your flaws or with your flaws, but because of them. And to find why uh, why your dragons give you your value, it, it is a process. And I never have the answer mm-hmm. for other people, obviously, because mm-hmm. every person has their own answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, of course. Of course, I get asked questions. Like one of the very logical questions is, how do I know if it's a dragon that I have to learn to tame and ride and, and find space for my <laughs> dragon in, in my heart versus it's mm. just a bad habit? Mm. It, mm. it is a question um, yeah. which is valid and, and important. Right. But one f- funny and annoying thing about me is that I never give answers. <laughs> I ask a lot of questions. I never give answers. Mm. I think it's like coaching. <laughs> <to> yes, <laughs> it's become who <laughs> but, you are. <laughs> I, I'm not a coach, though. I've never learned for a coach. But um, the, the thing with that is that, of course, there are bad habits. I have just uh, gone through the full uh, course that I've just recorded, and I had to go for uh, to, to just notice what needs to change, to be changed and edited. 
And it's always such a painful process for me. I hear myself speak every day, but I don't hear myself speak pass- passively in a way, like I don't listen to myself passively. Right. So whenever I have to do that, I'm terrified because I always notice things that I need to change about the way I speak. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm very conscious right now. You're not alone. Of, of, yeah. <laughs> not saying certain things, which I know I'm saying a little too much. <laughs> I, I think that's a common thing, a common human experience. So the question is, is that something that, is just a habit that I picked up and I can uh, mm-hmm. give up and it's not defining me. Probably yes. Versus uh, a few years ago, I heard this wonderful phrase, I'm recovering perfectionist. I adopted it. I was like, yeah, I'm recovering perfectionist until one day I realized that you can't recover from being yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there are things which you can change and it's usually on the habit level and they're usually the habits that don't support you. And then there are things which define you in a way. And some of them are not so good. Oh, okay, they're all good. It's just that how does society take it? Uh, as a woman, you would relate society has hard times with female sexuality, sexual mm-hmm. energy, mm-hmm. not just femininity, but actually being uh, attractive. Mm. In my case, this is an, uh, a part of me which is important where I find strength. When I know that I'm attractive, I feel much more uh, in power, much more uh, creative. I can give myself support. Mm. But how do you reconcile that? If you look at the politicians or women in uh, in any industry which is male dominated, they have they don't even have a choice but to completely hide it. So mm. some of those uh, essential parts of you which you cannot switch off and you maybe shouldn't because that will make you less of you are not so easy to accept. We, it's so easy to talk about, oh, I'm perfectionist, that's my biggest flaw. No, excuse me, that's a flaw which is very, it, it's like a badge of honor, everybody's a perfectionist. No, your biggest flaw are the things that actually make you shrink. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. these are dragons, not flaws. I don't want to call them flaws. I mean, I, I call them flaws because they, you were talking mm-hmm. about being flawsome. Yeah. But in essence, if it is part of you, you cannot shame yourself out of being you. Yeah, I definitely um, am more in the camp of like, if there's a part of you that you you feel like you're struggling in that area and you sit there and try to hate it and reject it and solve it, this is what it just, it it makes it get bigger. And if instead, you know, for me, I'll I'll use an example. I I think for me, having done so many podcasts, so many live videos, so many Instagram stories, so many, you know. Now, like I say stuff wrong, quote unquote, all the time. Like literally I'll say the wrong word. I'm like, that's not, I meant the complete opposite word, but I'll just laugh because a lot of it has come through reps, right? You know what I mean? But when I first started, you know, it was the same thing. And I, and, and, and I know everyone's a little bit different on how they relate with themselves, but I think that loving those sides of our, like, it's kind of like when my kids, you know, think of like a three or four year old and they're trying to talk and they say the wrong word. It's like, it's cute. It makes you smile, right? It's just like, it's adorable. And that's how I like to look at, I mean, I I wouldn't say I'm a hundred percent. Sometimes I'm like, it's the energy is a little bit more like, Hey, like, dude, what's going on there? Like, why are you so triggered by that? Or, you know, something like that, but it's always in the energy of support. Mm-hmm. And that's how I like to see these, you know, instead of, but cause it used to be, I used to be in this place of like, stop being like that. Come on, like be better change. I hate the phrase be better, by the way. I hate that phrase. <laughs> I don't think that's not how I see it. I see it as love, love, loving and supportive. I want what's best for you energy, right? Mm-hmm. Just like we would be with our friends or our kids. So yeah, I totally resonate on that. You've got it, but you got to take a look at them. You know, I mean, you don't have to. But it's helpful if we will take a look at these dragons that you're calling them and just like loving them instead of slaying them for me has been much more self-supportive and led to more growth. It's you, you can't really slay a dragon, honestly, it will be messy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the question, the question really is, is, is that just a habit that you have uh, acquired and it's not uh, helping you or is it really so deep a part of you? So I, I stopped I stopped fighting with being perfectionist. Yeah. I started yeah. harnessing it. Love it. This is something that I have and that's how I'm going to, uh, I, that th- these are the things in place that I'm going to uh, employ so that it doesn't, it doesn't stop me. I, I have it. another habit and not habit. I have another quality, which is deeply ingrained with me. I'm, I'm a leisurely person. I used to call uh, lazy, but I'm a leisurely person. I love to take time and mm. it easy. Mm. Mm. 
And this is something which uh, I, I know how to fight because I've been uh, an overachiever and perfectionist all my life. Mm. So of course I know how to apply willpower. But it was later when I just admitted that this is something what I am, what it made me do is find ways to not let this uh, part of me prevent me from growing, from from mm. achieving things, from doing mm. stuff. Put the put the processes in place to make sure that it is not going yeah. to be my curse. Yet it is my blessing because I yeah. optimize and I ask for help and I'm so good at delegating and I actually right. manage to do so much exactly because I refuse to right. work. <laughs> right. I love that. So you're, you're honoring you're instead of something's wrong with me mentality, I need to change this about me and stop being like this. You're honoring those parts of you and actually seeing them as superpowers, but by being aware of them, instead of shaming yourself of like, Oh, I should be harder worker or I should not be a perfectionist. All it's doing is like debilitating you is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And so instead it's about honoring those parts of me and seeing that they can actually be strengths. And now I get what you were saying by like, the strength part of it mm. that you know when you listed how you, the process goes. I, I do not know about your audience. I love uh, my kids have another side effect of COVID. I've seen all the movies. <laughs> yeah, I've watched them yeah. with kids. So there's this one movie, uh, X Men First Class, and there's a character called Mystique in that mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. She's this alien-looking blue woman with mm -hmm. red hair. Yeah. And there's this beautiful episode where um, she's having a conversation with Magneto. Her, I do not know how to call her yeah. friend. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, most of the movie that that beginning mystique appears as a blonde beautiful woman which is acceptable mm -hmm. to, by the society and then there's this conversation where magneto tells her if you spend so much energy on trying to appear something that everybody else wants you to be you're only paying half attention or half focus on the things that really matter mm-hmm mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think if you find this episode, it's actually such a classic episode. They, they have it on YouTube, even just, just this mm -hmm. one quote. Of course, I misquoted it. Uh, it's, it's a bit complicated to remember it. Yeah. But it's such a wonderful idea because what he's saying is that because you're trying so hard to be acceptable by the rest of the world or to look like yeah. what the world will, you're actually taking away the power from things that A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, I. It, it's an interesting journey being like, I'm not saying I'm super in the public eye, but I'm more in the public eye than I used to be per se in my life. And there was a moment, I'll never forget it. I can still remember the moment to this. And it was just this, it was like when it finally clicked, like, I don't, the world doesn't need anybody else. You know, you kind of hear that quote. They don't, we don't need more of them. We need you, <laughs> but it, but it, and it, it has cliche as it sounds that moment happened truly inside of me from within me. Right. Like I was just like, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to be me and like, come what may, you know, and it was just a decision. And, and I think, and, and, and so, you know, that was many years ago now, but going on that path, I know exactly what he's saying there, because when you're trying to, you're a puppet on strings, trying to be what you think everybody wants you to be, you are not powerful. You are, that is the most disempowering. I've been that person, you know, in my former life. And it's the most disempowering. It feels like your whole like light your whole like nervous system is like half on yeah you're, you're just like half engaged in life right and then once you just stop and you can be a uh, mystique and you can be weird and you can have your weird skin and your weird hair it's like it's just it's the most invigorating incredible space to be in because now you're freak now you're not worried about it's like I mean it's not you're not a sociopath but you're you're not like that not worried you know you still like care oh, about by the people. way sociopaths are but, very likable <laughs> yeah, that's one you of can, the, the qualities they have to be likable that's true that's true and it doesn't have to go that far um you know although that might I don't even know if they can help it but in terms of you know you still take people's feedback and things like that and care about people's feelings that's, and all of that you but, know that's another very interesting thing because that's another question that I get a lot when I talk about self-love is um where's the border between or the, yeah. the line between uh you being authentic and you being rude and I've experienced that on both sides mm, very I love very this extremely in fact today uh, I saw this wonderful social media meme where Joker from from Batman was uh saying something along the lines that uh you know I'm just being honest and everybody hates me for that or something along those lines uh -huh. well, that's not true that's mm. not true. Like you, mm. if you think you're just telling people the truth, you're just telling people your facts. Yeah. Right. That you hold truth. Yeah. Honesty without kindness is mean. 
Yeah. And yeah. we sometimes forget that. It's not about being brutally honest. Sometimes being true to yourself doesn't mean that you have to say whatever nasty thing you have to say to another person. Right. Sometimes being true to yourself means that you recognize that the situation is not acceptable and you eject yourself out of it mm. without trying to fix another person. Right. Who are you to judge? right. Right. So there is a huge difference between being um, being honest for the sake of being honest versus mm -hmm. being true to yourself. Mm. I love and that. what is your value? Is your is your value to to just jar the world? I was interviewing an expert mm. on authenticity, and before we went mm. live, she made what she thought was a very honest and straightforward con uh, comment to me, which was probably also meant to draw some boundaries. But first mm. of all, she misjudged me, and I think she was unfair. And second, mm. it happened two minutes before we went live, and I had the hardest interview of my life, and I couldn't help occasionally. Uh, being passive aggressive <laughs> right but, but the question is what was the point right exactly what was your it. value in that moment right what right. was this choice uh, like based in no mm -hmm. being just saying what you have on your mind isn't making you honest or authentic of true to you it just says you it just makes you person without boundaries i'll just say whatever i think mm -hmm. and i don't mm -hmm. care what you think Mm hmm. Yeah, I think uh, w what is the intended outcome of this is always a great question, you know, and I love how you say it's with kindness, right? So sometimes kindness, that's how I always think of it, too. It's like, I'm not going to like just walk up to somebody at the gym and be like, wow, you're doing those wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Does your back hurt? I know your back hurts. That, that's <laughs> terrible form. You know, I would never do something <laughs> like that ever. You know what I mean? And it's, and I'm just not going to say anything to them. You know, if they were to come over and ask me like, Hey, what do you think with kindness? I would, you know, say, Hey, okay. Like push your hips back a little bit more there. Yeah. That looks good. Like, you know, um, but it, just walking you around might ask just, with what's your goal. Maybe the person wants to get a slight, slight injury for whatever reason. <laughs> Yeah, we never yeah. know their agendas. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. Don't make assumptions, right? But you know, it, I I can be. Um, somebody told me I always I, I tend to say that I'm a blunt person, and they're like Tara. I wouldn't use that word. I don't think you're blunt. <laughs> I just think you're honest. Um, you know, but being that way, I I have a tendency to be that way, right? To to blurt <laughs> things out, you know. And so for me, it's been very helpful to. And I'm not saying I'm a plus on this. Sometimes it happens, but for the most part, it's like just empathy. Just how would I feel if I was on the receiving end of this has like helped a lot in the, in, in, in bluntness. Mm -hmm. Right. And so well, the I think question is what's your goal? Right. Yeah. I, I for example, I've, uh, I, I spoke in Russian market before the war and everything quite a lot. And for Russians, I look horrible. I don't take care of myself. Look at my hair. I have no manicure. The <laughs> amount of comments I've got on how I look the Russian audience is so so overwhelming. Really? And the question is, what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve? Because if somebody says something which I cannot take for yeah. that, whatever reason, because it's my looks and I can't change them. Well, maybe I can change my hair. And make okay. The... Sorry. Hold on. I'm interrupting. I'm sorry. But if you're on audio, she's like ridiculously gorgeous. So this is, I just have to say that. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> like, like, it's like, what? <laughs> Not by Russian standards, but thank you. I, you oh my me. gosh. It's like, I'm like, what? I'm so confused right now. <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of, a lot of very uh, harsh comments by, by Russian audience, but uh, thing number one, I can't change how I look. And a lot of us can't yeah. change our shape to a great yeah. degree. Yes, there's some kilos back and forth, but you know, the height, the, uh, I don't know. I, 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 health is not my industry, but uh, there are things you can't change. <laughs> Occasionally right. there are things you can't change because you're not there because you didn't ask for a comment because you get a right. comment and you get distracted from, wait a minute, you want me to do this and you might be right, but do you know in which space I am right now? Why are you saying this? And per a person right. may get distracted on something which is completely irrelevant. Right. So right. what's, what's the, if we ever ask ourselves, what's the point of my statement here? Mm -hmm. And we're clear on the goal, mm -hmm. then our communication is going to be different. For example, mm -hmm. a colleague says something mean to you. How do you react? If you ask yourself, what am I trying to find out right now? Am I going to, am I reacting to retaliate and to say you are an idiot yourself? 
Mm -hmm. Am I reacting to just say, hey, this is not cool. Don't talk to me like that. Or mm -hmm. am I reacting in a way like, wow, why did you say this? What, what happened? What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. These are three different goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to say is going to be defined by, why, by what your goal is. So when it comes to honesty, the most important rule about using honesty, and actually in my book, I have a chapter on the safety rules for using honesty, mm -hmm. because this is such a misunderstood it. topic. Yeah. And the rule number one is define your goal because your goal defines your perception. If you're having an argument with a loved one, if your goal is to prove your loved one wrong, that's what you're going to pick out in the argument. If your goal is to understand why your loved one is saying what they're saying or feeling the, the way they're feeling, your perception is going to pick out completely different clues. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that. The, the intention, you know, sometimes I'm, I, I obviously know that you meditate. I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> mind Valley. <laughs> um, and sometimes like when I spend You'd a lot of time, in, <laughs> when I spend time in silence, it makes me think, it makes me think about how much, um, I am interjecting into other people's lives every time I speak every word. And so it, you know, even with texting friends and think it's, it's, I'll catch myself. I'm like, what is this important enough that I need to enter interrupt their space, their silence, their meditation, their life, you know, and what is it, what effect is this going to have on them? You know, and, and, and being mindful of that. It's like, do they, do they really need that in their life right now? Okay. Leave them alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> but is it, will this bring joy? Yeah. They're going to love that. Let's do it or do it. You know, and if I need to ask for help, it's like, that's okay too. But it's like, let me like, let me really need it, you know, <laughs> like in order to interject in their space. So I love how you're talking about like the intended outcome and in all of our mm -hmm. communications. Like, what is it? Because when you ask yourself that all the accountability comes in, right. And it really helps you not being like victim blame, all this stuff. It's like, what do I want out of this communication? And now you're back in the driver's seat. So I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that you're tackling that topic of honest, honest communication, like what's healthy there. Cause it, it can really easily trickle into, I don't care. I don't care. You know, <laughs> mm. I don't care what anybody thinks or the polar opposite of, I'm just not going to say anything because that's safer. <laughs> but, and, and another, another sobering idea is who are we to judge? How much mm. do we know about other people? Right. Often, often we want to give, uh, as a, as a mother, I sometimes listen to other mothers talking to their children and I, of course I judge them in my head. I'm like, Oh, how can you talk like that? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Sometimes I'm very, I'm very compelled to say something, uh, uh -huh. but uh, since I haven't seen like write down abuse, which is criminal, uh, I generally withhold my opinion because who am I to judge? Yeah. yeah. We sometimes see an episode in people's lives without knowing much. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I wasn't asked, I wasn't invited. We, d we really don't know. We don't know uh, the mm -hmm. full story. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. Um, basically we don't know anything yeah and uh m less than anything we know we, we don't know how the person's going to react mm -hmm. how how is it going to affect them right unless unless you're being asked so it's it's such an interesting topic we uh in our industry we are a little bit um obsessed with fixing the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the world doesn't need fixing yeah the only thing that needs fixing is your relationship with you, because the moment your relationship with you changes, your relationship with the world starts changing because your relationship with the world is the reflection of your relationship with you. So if I've learned anything in 20 years in personal growth, it's this simple rule. It's much easier to love everybody else if you learn to love yourself. It's much easier to tolerate other people's quirks if you can tolerate your quirks. It's much easier to be patient with other people if you have learned to be patient with yourself. So leave the world at peace. Fix yeah. your relationship with you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. My favorite quote is Leo Tolstoy's, um, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself, you know, or herself. And cause every, every bit of goodness that I've had in my life has only resulted in all I had to do was just, and, and, and not even change, but you know, we do this outward and I'm guilty of it too, but we do this outward projection of like, this, this is how it should be. And this will make everything better. And it's like, Ooh, like bringing it back here. Every time I've done that, every little bit of that work of healing that in myself, or just getting good with that in myself and getting peace. You're exactly right. 
it's just, it's ease. It's, 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 it's a, it's, a if, it's, it's how to feel out of this like warrior mindset of like, gotta change everything and blah into mm-hmm. just peace, you know, and it, we're all on that path. I'm not, definitely not perfect on that path. I'm <laughs> flossom on that path. Oh God, but you're not perfect. <laughs> Can you imagine how horrible the world would be if everybody was perfect? Be really boring. Like living <laughs> among robots and silicon, <laughs> not silicon, uh, bionic creatures or whatever they are. <laughs> I don't think we would talk. <laughs> synthetic organisms. That's what I was called. <laughs> yeah. But, but synthetic organisms aside, uh, there is this beautiful movie called uh, Wonder that mm. uh, explains the concept mm. of uh, not judging people before knowing uh, enough mm. about them. I it love shows that movie. The story of, yeah. And it, it shows the story of a boy and you yeah. get so upset for the boy. Yeah, because his friend is stabbing him in the back. His sister is mean to him until the story turns. Yeah, and then suddenly you start feeling sorry for for the person who has hurt another person. My dear friend Vina, she says, "Hurt people, hurt people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We do harm to each other. We bite other people because we hurt. We hurt. Mm-hmm. You yep. never bite people when you're happy. <laughs> nope. Yep, it's so true. It's Except so true. With, the, with gentleness. Yeah." <laughs> We'll leave it there. <laughs> um, Christina, thank you so much. And, and, and to clarify in terms of your book is the best place for them to go. Christina man.com forward slash book. Right. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So becoming flossom. What else, what, where else should people partake of what you have to offer? Just all on your website. I am actually, um, very passionate about people uh, getting my book and uh, it, during okay. pre-sale I'm, uh, giving, uh, my, uh, self-love 101 it's actually called oh, something nice. else it's called uh it's a program uh, ten, 10 questions um god i don't remember the name of my program <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> hold on i've got it right here <laughs> no we just came up with the name oh no yeah I was, so, but it's, okay. it's something 10 questions uh for self-love something like okay. that okay but that that program is uh while well, we do pre-sales because uh people after pre-buying the book would want to to start with something yeah awesome. uh, that's that's the only thing i want to focus on uh, okay because that's my main message to the world <laughs> all right awesome thank you for coming on again and sharing this with us so many nuggets of wisdom in this episode thank you i appreciate it it's been an enlightening for me as well and guys again it's christina with a k christina mand.com slash book, or obviously you can just click the book link when you get to her website and yeah i'm excited guys it's time to get flossom. So go check it out. We'll put the link in the show notes. Christina, thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>